move on. All right. Number three, um, guy I would put way more money on and trust in and everything. Corbin Burns of the Baltimore Orioles, formerly of the Milwaukee Brewers. Cy Young winner in the past. Absolute freaking stud Zola. This dude I want on my team. I want his ball. He wants the baseball. And I, yeah. I, I, he wants the baseball. And I, he wants to toe that rubber. And, and the 32 starts this year. Great ERA for me. I had him as my my Cy, Cy Young winner at one point. About halfway through the year, I said he is going to win the Cy Young because he's going to be pitching in meaningful baseball games in September and and doing it. Turek Skubal, I didn't think was, and then Turek Skubal decided to say, "Hey, I'll start like literally every game for the Tigers and and go win a Cy Young and uh, literally pitch to October." Uh, so Turek Skubal, congratulations, you're going to win it. Corbin Burns though is an absolute stud. I want him on my team. I I don't I. I it doesn't man i want him like that's it like he should be just everybody should be going after him the orioles are young the orioles don't have much in the terms of starting pitchers after him he makes perfect sense to return to the orioles i don't think there is any way that the orioles screw this up and don't re-sign him 225 million over seven years just over 30 but i'm giving him length do not go to the dodgers corbin you will get hurt you will get hurt to not go. Every starting pitcher that goes to the Dodgers gets hurt. Stop it. They even signed guys hurt. Don't yeah. do not do it. Don't go out there and be a Dodger. Um, I, I don't think he'll be a Dodger. I just I, I don't think, in my reality, I don't think there's enough money there in, in what it's going to take. I don't know. I, I also think he's going to He loved Baltimore. I could see him staying there. Uh, I would also see him waiting a little bit to see what they do with Santander, with right field, with, with some of their other problems that they have to solve and and see that they're going to commit that money to it because they haven't committed money yet. Nope. They haven't. They're like new owners in, in Baltimore, new everything, but they haven't made that next commitment to any of those guys. Think about this. All of those young studs are still like there's we don't know what's good in this when we come. I think he's going to wait a little bit. I don't know if he has the the balls to say it, but he should tell them, make some commitments to some other guys, and and then I'll 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 choose to stay. Like if that's him, I'm gonna say and assign this next seven year contract, which I think your money, by the way, is right. I I if I'm gonna sign the seven year contract, I need to know like that we're not a three and out kind of organization. I'm gonna be sitting here for four years pissed. Like, show me a little bit. And that takes a lot. I don't know if anybody would actually have the willingness and balls to say that. But if I'm him, I would do it, and I'm going back to Baltimore. Absolutely. Just makes too much sense. I mean, think about this. He was in the AL East and still pitched to an under-3 ERA. He belongs yep. there. He belongs there. That's that's incredible. I know this isn't 1995 anymore, um, but 3 ERA still in the AL East matters. Let me ask you one question. When was the last time prior to Corbin Burns the Orioles had an ace? I mean, was it Mucina? I can't think of anybody that has I mean, been an ace. Ubaldo. He um, wasn't an ace with them. He he, he had a half, he had a he had a little bit, uh, right? Didn't he have a little bit? Uh, barely. Uh, Rockies. Um, I mean, I mean he was great, great with the Rockies, but great great point. No one like again. He's an ace. He's an yeah. ace. He's a, again. He's a Garrett Cole type of thing. He's an ace. An ace. Um, he, okay, Corbin Burns or, or Garrett Cole. Oh, uh, I, I, <laughs> I got to take Cole just because of the fact that he can play under those circumstances in New York, but it is really, really close. I wouldn't be pissed with either pitcher. Gary Cole, I, I take Gary Cole. I don't even think about it because it's like, I don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining if I had Gordon Burns, but Gary Cole's done it, uh, did it in Pittsburgh, did it in, in Houston, did it there. Like, knows how to put yeah. rings on his fingers, know how to, he knows how to take the ball in New York and fight for it. And he gave up, dude. The dude gave up six or whatever it was and got to go back out in the, like, nobody gets that. And he went yeah. out and then and did and pitch well after that. Like, that's my dude. I want both of those to have the ball. All right. Now the most overrated player on your list. At yeah, number put two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Continue. I'm sorry oh, to cut you off. I'll piss you all you want. Number The most overrated guy on your list. Uh, actually, I, I don't have any problem with it. Uh, Pete Alonzo, uh, the polar bear, uh, the New York Met first baseman, well, formerly New York Met first baseman. If he goes, I'm sorry, but this organization is falling apart unless they sign a whole bunch of guys. Uh, I, I, it, it just, it, I can't 
even picture him in another uniform yet. Like, out of everybody on this entire list, like he's the one that I can't even see in another uniform yet. And I picture everybody else. I'm like, yeah, I could see him in that. I can see him in this. I can see. This. I do not see him in any other uniform. Um, I have ideas of where he's going to go, but I want to hear your thoughts. So, um, whether the Mets sign Juan Soto or not, they have to bring back Pete Alonso because you are not going to find another player who's going to put up 35 home runs, 100 RBIs, play in New York under the scrutiny that he did during a walk year and still was a stud enough in the playoffs to do what he did against the Brewers and then played pretty damn good against the Dodgers. Uh, I think he belongs with the Mets. He is going to retire a Met. He is going to break all their records because right now it's all Daryl Strawberry and, and David Wright, and neither one of them finished their careers as a Met, which is crazy. Um, I'm going to give him $175 million over six years. He is just shy of 30. He's going to be 30 in, in a month. I think it's a very fair deal. It's just short of 30 million per year which is a low aav but it's giving him guaranteed money uh for a guy whose numbers have gone down each year over the last four years but is still bringing a lot to the table okay so i think he's gonna get more money than that i think he's gonna get six i think he's gonna be 350 range oh Three. no way sorry, sorry sorry 250 i meant 250 250 oh range. god you almost I gave me a heart attack i think he's easy, easy gonna be 250 275 range i think he had a very underrated year i think he got he was getting trashed by the media so early and, and that it, it wasn't wasn't called for it wasn't called for because an honest uh, all honestly it was because other players on the team suck so bad that you wanted alonzo to do well and you were expecting Windor to suck kind of again and you're sitting there going like, dude, you're the only one that's been good every year. Like, what is wrong with you? Because everyone else sucks. Like, you've always been the rock. And that's why he got all this, this like, heavy, like, put on his shoulders. But guess what he did? He kept grinding, put a smile on his face, gritted his teeth, and became the pole bear again. The dude yep. had 34 home runs, 46 year before, 40 the year before that, 37 the year before that. Like, like he's been consistent. On a down year, 34 and 88, he played every single damn game bro yeah. every single game i get it first base but every single damn game that means something this day and age it hit 240 which is still 22 point 23 points better than the year before 22 23 points better than the year before and everybody was praising him as being the stud and he hit better this year in some ways in, in some ways mm -hmm. um OPS plus, which is a metric that we use like to, to say, how do you compare the rest of your league? 100 is exactly average. It yep. was 23% better. Um, so 123, which is the exact same it was the year before. Yep. You know, and, and again, like his average on OPS plus is 134. That's really because he had two years that were just incredible. Yeah. And every other year, he's he's like 124, like 123. Like he's there. So he, this was exactly a year for him. It just, he has so much stress. Okay. Couple things. One, I think the Mets need him back. I think he's a New York Met. He doesn't. I could see him as a Yankee a little bit, but I really just see him as a Met. And I see him a Met for life. And I see him like finishing. He just has that like I, I just see his dirty jersey dirty and just a little grimy and just like wanting to work and wanting to. I don't see him in that perfect, beautiful white pinstripe uniform in in the the Yankees and being perfect. I could see it work, though. I do see the Yankees having a play in this. Rizzo, I'm sorry. Great. Great career. Done. Done. Um, wh whoever else is there. Uh, it who is that? Rice? Yeah. Who's the other guy? Gone. Done. Just, you're, you're, you're not it. Not no, You're not quite it. When you have an opportunity to bring in Alonzo, again, like, the, if the Yankees brought in Bregman and Alonzo, I'm looking at that line. I'm going, oh. I need I that in saying no. I need old. a lefty. I need some lefties. I need a lefty in right field or lefty somewhere else. Like I need other lefties in there somehow. I got to figure that out because that's a lot of righties. But again, it's it's 2025. There's a lot lefty righty matchup isn't the same as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a lot of righties in the lineup. One team you did not list here, which I think is going to be a player in this, which would be yeah. really interesting, depending on one guy you left off the list who I, I'm actually very disappointed you left on the list Christian Walker these are the Diamondbacks uh, too old. they are what too old no 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 you're not listening to me oh Alonzo 
to the oh the going to the Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks because depending on what they bring what they do with Christian Alonso, the the Diamondbacks need a right a, a, a power Christian hitting Walker. first baseman Christian Walker. What did I say? You said Christian Alonso. Christian Alonso. Hey, that's uh, that's Christian Walker good. and Pete Alonso's son. Bring bring them together. Um, bam, pow, boom. We got this. But I, I think that's a team you're missing in this. I do like the Mariners in this as well. But um, but the Diamondbacks I think will be players because they're going to have a need at that exact position if they don't bring back Christian Walker. Um, so I think that's that's one of those things you're looking at a team with the Diamondbacks that are built to kind of win now like they're built for for now so they're going to be players and somebody but they're not going to be able to give out the six year 250 that other teams are going to get out right anyways this brings us to our number one free agent uh uh show oh, and, oh and i've been thinking about this contract for a long long time oh juan soto um I mean, what do I say about Juan Soto? Like, I, I, it's the weirdest thing. It's what he did with the Nationals, what he did with the Yankees. Um, like, his bad years were still pretty good years when he was with San Diego, right? Like, it, it, Stud, um, this is everything you grow up to be as a 26-year-old free agent. Yep. And uh, World Series champion, uh, just all-around incredible baseball player. Yeah. So... And, and, and difference maker, different, and that's the thing. You're just not a good baseball player. You're you're a difference maker. Uh, yeah. The question is, what is this contract going to look like? Here's my question: Before we get into the contract, what age do you believe a player starts to go on their downswing? No, I don't. I think when you get to 34. Okay, so I think it's actually. No, really I, sorry, I would say 33 is the downswing. 34, 35, like you're. Okay. It's pushing it. I mean, you can get to the some of those starting pitchers that can go in the later. Like we've seen that, that's no problem. But I think nowadays with how pitching is used, you're not going to see that much anymore. Okay. So I look at Juan Soto and I say, you know what? I want him. I want him on my team really bad, but it's going to cost me a lot of money. So I am going to take a book out of, I'm going to take a page out of Steve Cohen's book and what he did with Verlander and what he did with Scherzer. And I am going trade to, him to the, trade him and then eat their contract. Will you shut up? <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here and you're trying to be a smart ass. That's my job. Um, I'm going to give Juan Soto $650 million over 13 years, but I'm going to structure it very differently than any other contract in the history of baseball. I'm going to give him $350 million in those first six years, so I can guarantee that I get him for his peak years, and then I'm going to give him an opt out after that sixth year, so that way he only ha he has seven years, $300 million left, so he can opt out, go to another team when he's still 31 years old, and I got him for his best years, and I'm off the hook for those crap years at the end of the contract. Um, generally, people offer the contracts the other way around, so when I know. the money isn't as valuable, uh, they're eating the money, right? Like the Otani type of deal, like when the money's cheaper. So Correct. if you sign $40 million now, it's actually only worth like $20 million when you get to it. Mm -hmm. Um it's an interesting thing. I mean, that's the that's what this that's the interesting thing about him signing. I I find him who he signs with way less interesting than how they're going to structure the deal. And Otani changed the world, right? Changed the right. game again. Somehow, if the unicorn figures out a way to change the game. Shocker, right? Um, so that's going to be my interesting thing is how who is going to sign him? Okay, that's obviously a change base, major league baseball game changer. How are they going to structure it? Like we all know the numbers. It's going to be insane. It's going to be you know four hundred to seven hundred million dollars somewhere in there, depending on how many years and all this stuff and opt outs and all this crazy stuff. I do think that's smart. I think it's actually smart to even pay him even a little bit more, and then opt out every year and be like, all right, at any point you can go. Like no, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that. I would, um, I would because at, at that point, even if he has a great year with you and then he wants to opt out and become another free agent, like the chance of likelihood that he's going to have another great year at those ages, right? At 32, at 33. Oh, you're talking like, after the six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the six okay. years, then you give him opt out every single year. And like, yeah, he hits, he might hit gold again, 
yeah, I, I'm good. I'm not. I don't want to be on the like you, the, to do that again is so unlikely, uh, especially that the fact that he's already had so many years under his belt and he's 26. Like it's cool. That's going to catch up, dude. I don't care when it starts. It's going yeah. to catch up. Um, I think the Yankees have to be front runners for for what we saw this year or what we're seeing. They're, they they got to be number one, number one, number one. A- after that, I my personal thing, and you put them on the list, is the Nationals. The Nationals, I think, are going to be a lot bigger players in this than we think. We have they have a lot of money to spend, a whole lot of young players. The cells that we're going to keep improving as as we come along, you're going to be obviously the face, and we're going to sell this. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, the Mets obviously make sense as well. The Dodgers, I just don't know if the Dodgers will be able again. I, I don't want to put it against the Dodgers and anything, but at some point that money is going to catch up. Yeah, like you can't have, you know, X amount of money for Otani, uh, Yomimoto, like, and, and Soto all at hitting at the same time, and at the same time, like all those guys having certain ages that are going to just hitting in it. That's how you kill an organization pretty quick. Like there's going to, yeah. it's good. The money's going to catch up and, and it's just not catching up now for the Dodgers. It's, it will catch up. And I think people throw their names out there. Oh, the players, players, players. Like the only way they survive is if they, if they front load the money and eat the sour, but then they're going to be eating money. I, I don't think the Dodgers are complete players in this. I might be totally wrong, but I see this as a Mets heavy, Nationals heavy, um, Yankees Yankee heavy, exceptionally heavy, and then the Orioles and Blue Jays will be interesting players too. Santander going out, I think the Orioles are. This is an incredible opportunity for Orioles, Orioles to get a young player that's going that is a salty veteran to play with those other guys, and the Blue Jays have to somehow jump in and do something because that whole front office to me, I, I they're even still around. I have all the respect for him in the world. Right. Um, how the fact that they're still around blows my mind. Listen, I mentioned it months ago. Um, the Orioles are the dark horse. They have a billionaire owner. They have a lot of young players. If they can sign up, uh, sign Soto, and they have Henderson, and they have Adley, and then somehow they keep Corbin Burns, that is a team that's going to be good for a few years. I still think the Mets are the front runner, not because I'm a Mets fan. I just think Steve Cohen has been licking his chops, waiting for Soto for the last couple of years. And we've seen that he can be um, very creative when it comes to contracts. And I would not be shocked if Uncle Steve watches this show and says, you know what, James got a point. Let me give him a lot of money up front and then he can opt out at 31. So let's get him in his prime years. I think it is a match made in heaven. Do you like my theory on the front loading of a contract with him? Because it's fifty six it's fifty six think- million dollars a year that you'd be paying him, but the AAV would be lower. So what? He's gonna get it. He's gonna be he's gonna be getting so much, so much money in general. I think it makes a lot of sense. But don't forget. Sorry, don't forget with Baltimore. I mean, Jackson Holiday, um, Colton Cowser, Mountcastle. Like, there's so many other guys there, and that's just the the lineup, right? And the road, yeah. and you not even get to the rotation and stuff. There's so many young guys there to have somebody like him, and again, wants that spotlight, wants that energy that like Baltimore like would would just fall over for him, I think too. And you don't have to give the prospects up. That's the beautiful part about this. Baltimore would do the same thing they've always done: not give up prospects and get the superstar i think it fits it's a it's a great fit i just don't know if they have the mentality yet to spend with the yankees how they used to spend with the yankees and and think about this though if he went to baltimore and you have a surplus of great hitters what do you do when you have a surplus you get rid of them so if you have i'm sorry yeah you gotta move Yeah, if you have Jackson Holiday, or you have Colton Cowser, you have Kerstad, guess what? Somebody will give you a pretty damn good pitcher for one of those three prospects. And you still have a great lineup because you have Soto. Again, I'd love to see him as a Met uh, from a baseball standpoint. Wow, it'd be great if he was an Oriole. Yeah, and I I might, I mean, crazy stuff here. I don't know if it would ever happen, but like... You, you make a run at like trade one of those guys and, and another piece for for Spencer Strider. You take a chance on him, like a guy coming yeah. off an injury like that. I don't know if, if Atlanta would ever do it. I don't even know if they they've got so many line, spots in their lineup too. But they got a lot of those guys are now going to be yeah. hitting uh, free agency in a year and a half here in two years. Like that, they might be perfect replacement guys type of thing. Anyways, that's way ahead of ourselves. But 
let us know what you think let us know in the comments what who you have as your top 10 it, where james is wrong where i'm right throw it out there um there's so much fun that goes into this if you got numbers on any of these guys that you can guarantee let's, let's hear it if you guys if you have your your team like you're like this is our one target we should be going for or this is the fun package we should be trying to sign like i love that idea with the yankees sign a right fielder or third baseman it, 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 right field right field but sign bregman sign um peter lonzo or christian walker i think christian walker guys so underrated so underrated as as a as a stud he just had a down year and then when he got healthy it was a, it was an incredible year 34 um, though 34 but but sign him for two years whatever it is give him pay him for two years and and that yep. he'll, he'll be perfect in new york um and then sign a starter sign a free agent anyways if you have ideas let us know uh and we'd love to hear from you and don't forget to go to top velocity pro top velocity pro for all your pitching player development needs Come on out to Top Velocity Pro. It's, again, every episode is sponsored from Top Velocity Pro. I get so excited about the free agents. I forget about my own sponsorship. And I get 10% of anybody that comes on. Come on. Come on out. Yes. But <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Closers, brought to you by Man Cave Sports. And uh, we'll see you next time.